looks like I missed that. Uh, the magnification is the image height divided by the object height. Uh, I'm going to call that HI divided by HO. So here HI is our image height. HO is our object height. A uh, magnification of 1 means that the image is the same size as the object. A magnification greater than 1 means the image is what? Bigger, smaller, same size? Bigger, right. So you're probably familiar with these. Uh, magnification greater than 1 means it's bigger. Less than 1 means it's smaller. Uh, if the magnification is negative, and you might not be familiar with this, but if the magnification is negative, then the image is inverted. We don't usually think about inverted images, but they occur fairly frequently. In fact, the images on the back of our eye are inverted. We'll see when we look at convex lenses that it inverts the image, and it's actually our brain that flips the image back up again. Have you ever heard of these glasses that you can buy? that they cause everything to appear upside down. Y'all seen these before? Well, y if you wear them for a while, like for a day or so, eventually you begin to see stuff flip right side up again because your brain processes the image that you see on the back of your eye, on the back of your retina, and the image is originally on the back of your eye is upside down and your brain flips it. But you can buy these glasses that cause everything to appear upside down again and your brain will eventually process that image as well to cause everything to appear right side up again. But then when you take them off, well, you sort of have to retrain yourself. Um, let's see. So if the magnification is negative, the image is inverted. We would also say then that the image height, remember this is HI, is also negative. So if I have an inverted image, this is my object, this is my image, this has a negative magnification and a negative image height. So if it has a negative image height, that's where this equation holds consistency because if HI is negative, then that gives us a negative magnification. Don't worry, you'll have this on your equation sheet, but you need to remember these notations about the signs. And all throughout this chapter, it's going to be really the signs that are the difficult part remembering what a positive magnification, negative magnification means, and then also later positive and negative image and object distance, what that means, that whether it's real or virtual. All right, um, and then finally, if the magnification is positive, the image is upright, and the image height is also positive. So if I have an object here, my image here, this image has a positive magnification and a positive image height. If it's negative magnification, it's inverted with a negative image height. If it's positive magnification, it's uh, po uh, upright and HI is also positive. So here's just a summary of all those. If our magnification is bigger, then one, it's a bigger image than the object. If it's less than one, it's a smaller image than the object. If it's equal to the one, they're the same size. That's like your bathroom mirror, a flat mirror. Uh, and then if the magnification is positive, it's an upright image. If it's negative, it's an inverted image. That might be a little confusing right now, but you're going to use those a number of times through the homework and until the problems will work. Don't worry, it'll sort of become second nature to you. Um, the magnification is also based on the image and the object distance. Uh, so, for example, with the flat mirror, I know that Q is equal to negative P. I also know that for a flat mirror that the magnification is equal to what for a flat mirror? It's equal to 1. Is it positive or negative 1? Is your image upright or inverted in a flat mirror? It's upright, so the magnification is what? Positive or negative? It's positive, right. So for a flat mirror, my magnification is equal to positive 1. So what orientation of Q and P, or what type of equation with Q and P would give us a magnification equal to positive 1? 
what could I do to Q and P in order to get a magnification equal to 1? Okay, I'll do a negative Q, and then I'll do what with it? Divided by what? Right, so I'm going to take a ratio of those two, is what I'm hearing. So uh, my magnification actually is the negative of Q divided by P. This will be on your equation sheet, uh, so no need to sweat it, but notice that it does hold true for a flat mirror that if Q is equal to negative P, I could put a negative P here, the negative of negative P would be positive P divided by P would be positive 1. But this magnification also holds true for spherical mirrors and spherical lenses as well. All right. Uh, so for images and flat mirrors, Q is equal to negative P, and then M is all equal to 1, which would be negative of negative P divided by P, which would equal to positive 1. So that's just it shows that it holds for flat mirrors. We will have to do some ray tracing for spherical mirrors and for flat mirrors. You might have to do it for a flat mirror, some ray tracing. Um, you'll do this again next semester. You know, the way the, the labs have been, or the way the classes have been sort of reorganized the past couple of years, we've lost optics out of this class completely, out of the 200 level. And actually, there's actually a third semester of physics that none of you will ever take, likely. Uh, but there's a third semester where we do light there. But it, the labs have gone unchanged for some reason. I don't know. The labs just, we still cover light. So you guys will see this again next semester in the lab. Um, and you'll have to draw ray diagrams and stuff like that. So when you're drawing ray diagrams for a flat mirror, you need to use the law of reflection. The law of reflection is just that the incident angle is equal to the reflected angle. So if I have a flat mirror right here, this is the mirrored side of the surface. If I have a ray that comes in like this, the incident angle is this theta i. The reflected angle is the angle that it comes off of it with, which is theta r. So theta i here is equal to theta r. So we'll need to remember that when we're drawing ray diagrams and tracing out how light, when it comes to a flat mirror, what it does. That when it comes up to a flat mirror, we need to measure the incident angle and then show that the reflected angle is the same. It's true for flat mirrors. It's also true for spherical mirrors that we'll see when we get later into those, probably on Friday. All right, that our incident angle is equal to our reflected angle. By the way, this occurs for particles, too. Like uh, in pool, if you play pool a lot, you know that this is true, that when uh, a ball bounces off of a bank, or when it banks off the side of the bank, what's it called? The rail, thank you. When it bounces off the rail, that the incident angle is equal to the reflected angle. So it's a, a property of particles. In fact, that's why you know, all throughout the past few centuries, people have debated about whether light is a particle or a wave. You know, familiar with this debate? Yeah, you probably covered it in chemistry. And this was one of the evidence that light was a particle because it, it acts like particles when it bounces off of reflective surfaces. There was also good evidence that it was a wave as well. Um, so when we're locating an image, we're going to draw a ray from the object to the mirror, and then it will reflect according to this law, the law of reflection. So we're going to draw a ray that will go from the object the mirror. And then we'll draw a normal line from which we'll measure our theta incident. And then our reflected ray will come back like this. So that the angle here, theta r, is equal to theta i. We can draw a second ray as well. We can draw a second ray that comes off of the, this object and goes like this. Now notice here that my incident angle is a lot bigger, so I'm going to draw my reflected angle a lot bigger too so that they're equal. Now images form where two rays cross. 
So notice here that the reflected rays are diverging. Images form where two reflected rays cross. Let me write that down. We'll use that actually when we get the spherical mirrors as well. Images form where two reflected rays cross. So this is our number one reflected ray. And then this is our number two reflected ray. Those two rays, those two reflected rays, are never going to cross because they're divergent. Okay? Uh, so that's going to tell us that in order to find the location of the image, we have to draw what we call virtual rays. And to draw a virtual ray, you take the reflected ray and you trace it back like this. And then I do the same for the other ray. I trace it back. And my angles are a little off here, it looks like. But this is the location of the image. So my image is going to be right here. Again, I'm just freehanding this. So my image is a little bit off. My image really should be right about here, an equal distance from the mirror. You might have gotten yours a little better. If you use a ruler, as you'll do next semester, with a protractor, you can find fairly accurately where that image is located. What type of image is this? It's a virtual image. So here I have a negative image distance. I know it's negative because it's on the opposite side of the mirror from the, Im from the object. And uh, because it has a negative image distance, then it's a virtual image. You can also think of this negative image distance. Whenever you have a negative image distance, uh, it's as if it's on the, the virtual side of the mirror. You ever see that movie Poltergeist? Where the lady comes to the right, comes to the right. You ever see it's kind of an old movie. It's a little dated. But uh, all the people lived on the back side of the mirror in the virtual world or whatever. It's sort of like that. So these, uh, these images are on the back side of the mirror, sort of the virtual part of the mirror. All right. Let's try a little quick test. So this figure shows two people observing the image of a rock in a flat mirror. Uh, person number two sees the rock at position C. So person number two right here sees it right here. Where does person number one see the image of the rock? Person number two sees the image right here. Where does person number one see the image of this object? All right, just a few more seconds. I'll stop at 105, 105. And you think those should be the right answers. B should be the right answer, maybe A. But in reality, C is the right answer. Y'all try this when you go home, like especially if you have a big mirror in your bathroom. Set something in front of the mirror and then move around and see where the position of that thing changes. It actually doesn't change at all relative to the object. Uh, you know, think about this, that if you have the object really close to the mirror, right? Like if I put an object, if I have a mirror right here, and I put an object right up next to the mirror, then the, the image is going to be right up next to the mirror. If I shift around where I'm looking at that, the image doesn't change. Try this when you get home. It turns out that the image location doesn't change at all. So C is the right answer here. Regardless of the observer, the image is always going to be in the same spot.
you sort of just have to see that. But try it when you go home. Look in your bathroom mirror and try that out. All right, what is the magnification of a flat mirror? I'll stop at 30 seconds. All right, A is right. Our magnification is equal to 1. Remember, our magnification is negative Q over P. Uh, for a flat mirror, Q is equal to negative P. And so the magnification is equal to 1. That means whenever you look in a flat mirror, you're always going to be upright. You're always going to be the same size as yourself, or the object will always be the same size. All right, so that's a little bit about flat mirrors. Uh, on the test, you might have to draw a ray diagram for a flat mirror. might have a, a multiple choice question or two just sort of about what is a flat mirror, what's the magnification, those sorts of things, basic stuff about flat mirrors. Most of it's going to be on spherical mirrors, however, spherical mirrors and lenses. When we think of a spherical mirror, we can think of it as, as being cut out of a big sphere. That's why they're spherical, because they're spherical in shape. So if I imagine that I have this spherical surface, and I just cut a piece of it off, and then what's remaining, this part, will be a spherical mirror. Now we can look either on the inside of the sphere, and that'll be a particular type of mirror called a, a concave mirror, or we can look at the outside of the sphere, and that's a particular type of mirror called a convex mirror. You'll need to be able to identify these. Concave and convex refer to the, uh, to the shape of the mirror. So if the inner surface of the sphere is reflecting, the mirror is a concave mirror. And I remember this because it's like it, it caves in. I'll bring a, a, uh, a concave mirror next time, but it, it caves in. So it's like the whole thing just sort of caves in on itself. Uh, so here, this is the back side of the mirror. You would have an object on this side of the mirror. This is our concave mirror. And then at the outer surface, oh, by the way, this is also called uh, a converging mirror. We'll see that a little bit again. It's called a converging mirror because of what it causes the light rays to do. So concave refers to the geometry or the shape of the mirror, but converging refers to what it does to the light. It causes light rays to converge. But concave particularly refers to the geometry, the shape of the mirror. If the outer surface of the sphere is the reflecting surface, this is a convex mirror. Um, I don't have a full thing to help you remember that. But a convex mirror looks like this. Uh, this would be like an object standing over here. This is the back side of the mirror, and then you look at it. Uh, this is also known as a uh, diverging mirror. Where are some places that you see these? Where do you see a convex mirror like this, or a diverging mirror? Whereabouts? Okay, right, on your car. Your right, your right, uh, passenger mirror is a right right so those are convex mirrors they make things appear smaller than they actually are so that you get a bigger field of view you can see more uh, and then that the right mirror doesn't really look spherical because it's big it's, it doesn't have a very big radius of curvature or it has a very big radius of curvature rather uh, but if you buy those little mirrors to go onto your car mirror like we have those look more spherical. Somewhere else you see convex mirrors that are very obviously spherical.
Right, yeah. So security mirrors are convex mirrors. And the reason we use those is because they make things look small so you can see a lot more stuff. It gives you a bigger field of view. At high school? Really? It sounds a little strange. <laughs> okay. Are you liter literally psychotic? Oh, okay. Violent and psychotic. That's great. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, now for both of these types of mirrors, we're going to describe a couple of things the focal length and the center of curvature. Uh, the center of curvature is, if you imagine that this is part of a sphere, the center of curvature is just the radius. So this would be the center of curvature, C. And then the focal point will be one half of that. The focal point is one half the center of curvature. Um, we can also describe the focal point. So the focal point is described in two ways. The focal point is described by the geometry, half of the center of curvature. So imagine this big thing is actually part of a bigger sphere. The center of curvature is the radius of that sphere. The focal point is one half of that radius. But we can also define the focal point in a different way. And that is the point where the parallel rays will converge or focus. Um, they look like this. If I have rays that are parallel and they come in, they're going to focus at the focal point. By the way, we can get parallel rays when they originate from some source that's very, very far away. So if uh, that is if p is equal to infinity, then our light rays will be parallel. I'll show you the. Let me go ahead and show you the lens equation or the mirror equation rather. It's going to come up soon uh, next time, but let me just go ahead and throw this out here. One over p plus one over q equals one over f. This is called the mirror equation. I'll introduce it next time, but I just want to show it to you now. Because if I let p equal infinity, then this term just goes to zero. And then I see that q, which is the image distance, is equal to f. So if p goes to infinity, q is equal to f for this mirror equation. So we define our focal point in two ways. We define our focal point as the, uh, the half of the radius of the sphere or half of the center of curvature, we call it. And then we also describe the focal point as the place where these parallel light rays will focus. Next time, like I said, I'll bring you a concave mirror and a convex mirror, and we'll see an example of where these parallel light rays can focus. All right? Uh, we're going to stop there. We have to do evals today. And we'll pick back up with this uh, next time. Listen, so for the evals, You have two forms that you'll do. On one of the forms, you'll have to put in this course number. Y'all have all done evals for classes? Yes, yeah, so I think you probably know what's going on. Let me just explain in brief what these are. You have two forms. You have this form, which is for open comments. When you write on this, whatever it is that you write, it gets stuffed back into the envelope. And then nobody sees it until I see it. Okay, so this comes back to me, and it's important to me for a couple of reasons, or one reason really in particular, that's relevant to you is that I always try to go through this, and students will suggest changes, and I'll try to implement those changes to the best of my ability for the next semester. So stuff that you say here can take can take place next semester. So it's a useful thing. So please spend some time thinking about that. But nobody else sees it except for me. So like, if you want to use bad language, that's fine. If you want to uh, whatever you want to say there is fine. Nobody else is going to see it. This is a bubble form you'll fill out. You bubble in one to five, yada, yada, yada. Uh, other people do see this, so please take time. It's important. I look at the numbers too, uh, but other people see it as well. So just sort of plinko this out to the whole class, spread it out.
I need somebody to take care of, take it to the dean's office. Does anybody need a pencil? We need a pencil for the bubble form. Anybody else need a pencil? All right. Uh, this number is for the form. I have to get out of here, but I need a couple minutes, so.